Hello, and welcome to the Ryan Cast. At least that's what I called it online on the few sites that I posted it on YouTube or SoundCloud, which I just put last week's episode on, on YouTube like a day ago. Because holy fuck, their fucking upload system is horrible. It takes. I have a really good upload speed. I mean, it should have taken me like 30 seconds to upload this. I think it was like 700 megabytes because fucking YouTube and it had to be a video file. I probably should have compressed it, but whatever. Um, it took like eight hours to get it up. Plus, I didn't even think to put it on YouTube until Monday. So, I'll keep uploading these to YouTube, though. This is supposed to be a Wednesday weekly thing that I do because of reasons. I think I covered all those last week, so I'm not going to repeat it. This is more for me than you. (sighs) Anyway, time for a weekly weigh-in where I talk about being fat because that is what my life is being fat. I weighed in today at 256 pounds, which I think last week was 364. So that makes it 8 pounds for one week. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Although, I'm still in this phase of not enjoying anything, and that includes food. So, that's probably contributing. (coughs) I still have a cough, obviously. Get ready to hear that a bunch. Uh, what the fuck was I going to say? Anyway. Eight pounds in a week. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Not enjoying anything and not being hungry. Yeah, I don't like food right now at all. Actually, Monday I did a 24-hour fast, probably longer than that, because I didn't even eat until like 4 the next day, so much longer than that. I'm not going to do the math, though. But that's helpful. It has prevented me from binge eating, which is good. I still need to lift more. I've been hitting this tire in my yard and uh, lifting some weights a little bit, but my schedule is nowhere near as rigorous as it used to be, which maybe that's a good thing. Who knows? Or maybe I'm just justifying my laziness internally here and then talking to you about it, whoever you are. But I've been thinking a lot about criticizing people. Or not even people, just things in general. But all this politics stuff has kind of leaked into everything that I enjoy, you know. It's infected my video games. People, I'm starting to lose respect for people that I otherwise would have enjoyed due to their rampant political zealotry. That's a good word for it. Because even... I wouldn't even... I'm not like... I try, I'm not trying not to pick sides politically. I'm not going to... Actually, I should come on here and shit talk Donald Trump, because if you're a reason, um, I'm not going to get into that. See? I was being a dick, which I need to stop. Anyway, people are so uh, consumed by their political party's dogma that they refuse to listen to things or understand things or see things from other perspectives. Because that's all I really want to do. I mean, I, I've i been registered independent for as long as I've been able to vote. And I think that blind affection for a political leader just due to their party is a dangerous thing. Especially with all the fake news for all these people out there. Fake news is... that term fucking pisses me off. Fake news. Remember when it was called Propaganda? Do we just not understand what propaganda means anymore? Or are we, uh... Are we, are, is our vocabulary too low as a country to recognize the word propaganda? Because uh, most of our, let, let's face it, for your average person, their news input for everything that they really experience is not just politics, but hobby news sites, whatever. Most of it comes from your Facebook feed. 
And then, me being me, I, my mind goes to Metal Gear Solid 2 always because of that last bit where it's revealed. Keep in mind, this game came out in what, 2001, 2002? Fucking long ass time before the internet got huge. Well, someone's gonna nitpick that phrase, but you know what I fucking mean. So back then in that game, in 2001 or 2002, there was an organization called the Patriots, which was pretty much the Illuminati, I guess. But they decided they wanted to flood people with more information than they can handle. So much information of conflicting ideas and opposing opinions that people can kind of choose what they believe and choose what pieces of media to follow. That way they're all comfortable inside their thought bubble without experiencing the ideas of others leading to blind worship of whatever they believe in. And this covers, again, everything. Even even your hobbies. I mean, of course it's the biggest metaphor for politics today, but... Let's not pretend that, I don't, you know me, I'm a fucking nerd. Let's use video games as an example. All those young kids engaged in their console wars when they should be playing on PC, come on. They subscribe to the pages that tell them a PlayStation 4 is better than an Xbox One. And then they are constantly bombarded with information that reinforces those beliefs. Which is, yeah, people fall into the dogma of Everything. Everything. Everybody's afraid to be wrong. That's what it is. If they made a shitty decision or regret that decision, it feels pretty bad for regretting any decisions. Again, I feel I don't think I should clarify here, but I am because it's just a habit, I guess. A mansplaining to you guys. I got told that once because I explained something to a female, which. Oh, feminism. That's a complicated topic <laughs> that I'm not going to talk about. I don't even remember what I was talking about. Bubbles of information, I think. So people follow their ideas on the internet. Or th- yeah, I was talking about people being afraid to be wrong. Oh my god, my Scott Discord is going off. People are afraid to be wrong. So they surround themselves of similar people with similar ideas that reinforce their opinions because being wrong would suck. And they don't like seeing the opposing side because if you get swayed admitting you're wrong is kind of scary for your average person with a big ego. It's a real lack of humility these days. Anyway, I think this was a tangent. I was talking about criticism earlier of people, products. That is amusing that I call some forms of art form, or some forms of art a product. Ha. My thoughts are a little more scattered than usual. This podcast is brought to you by my shitty day job, whiskey and zero-carb energy drinks. Yeah. Yeah. So people criticize things in weird ways. I think... I've been thinking about that a lot. I spent a lot of time looking at movie reviews and video game reviews because wasting money on something that's terrible also fucking sucks. The more I do that, the more I disagree with a lot of them. So these days, I tend to find reviewers that... uh, I understand their personality, so I understand their likes and dislikes, and how similar my taste is in things to them. That way, I actually know where the opinion is coming from. And I think... This is a dumb thought. I think, um... A lot of these reviewers of things, movies, all that, because I spend a lot of time on Rotten Tomatoes, which is probably bad for me. 
these reviewers of movies always try to find some universal standard that all movies can be judged by. And then kind of ignore the purpose of the product, the thing. Because, I, I don't know, I see a lot of these threads on Reddit that are like, what's your guilty pleasure movie? Or, what bad movie do you love? And then people list some great fucking movies like Robocop and Kung Pao and Starship Troopers I've seen a few times. And then like, uh, let's say Kung Fu Hustle. I'm trying to think of movies that fall into this category because right now my brain just pulled a blank the time I needed that information most. But anyway, let's use Kung Pao as their primary example. That movie's not bad. That movie is unique. One, there's nothing out there like it. And for the goal of the film, which is to just be silly and dumb, which is awesome... People confuse the goal with... They they try to compare the goal of something that's not supposed to be Oscar bait. Everyone thinks that in order to be a quality experience, something needs to have something profound to say about life. But sometimes, we just want... (coughs) Excuse me. Sometimes, we just want to see a dude pull some gopher chucks out of the ground and beat up ninjas with it. And that can be done poorly, and that can be done well. All obviously. I mean, all the sci fi channel movies and Sharknado are nothing compared to actual good B horror like Evil Dead. And that is solely due to technique. So you can judge something by the intent of the creator. The Sam Raimi making Evil Dead succeeded in making something that is campy and fun because it is a legitimately quality movie. Everything about it serves its purpose and puts it together as a whole. Whereas something like Transformers, or... uh, Let's just go with Transformers. It's generic, and the purpose of that movie is to show giant robots beating each other up. That's a dumb premise, and I'm choosing Transformers through the similarities in tone of something that is not supposed to be Academy winning, but is also bad, because it's just not well made. I mean... A good, stupid movie, like Evil Dead, respects the intelligence of the viewer. Everything is put together smartly in uh, ways that are relevant to the goal of the movie. Whereas Transformers is um, trying to appeal as to trying to appeal to as many people as possible without gaining any character of its own, and in in pursuit of chasing its general audience instead of the audience who would appreciate what the thing actually is. They uh, kind of throw a lot of weird tonal shifts at you or put in dumb jokes so kids can understand it or basically just appeal to laziness. Usually if you can predict the jokes in a movie, it's just bad writing, you know? I want expectations to be subverted, which, again, back to Evil Dead, that new show, is keeping up the quality of the old ones. God damn, you should watch that. Ash vs. Evil Dead. I'm not sponsored by them. I wish I was. That would be awesome. (coughs) So. Yeah. There can be things that are not super serious done well, and things that are not super serious done bad, and people often confuse the well-made cheesy films, like Mars Attacks is another good one, that movie is fucking great, despite it being silly and stupid and unprofound but that wasn't their goal their goal was to be funny and cheeky and dark, and everything in that movie works towards that, and they succeeded in creating what they wanted to create, thereby making it a success. Also been playing a lot of Bayonetta, I talked about that last week for like a second, because I didn't really play much of it, but 
game is hard as fuck. I am getting my ass kicked in it. Also, my room has a lack of electrical chargers, electrical outlets. So I have to, like, unplug shit to charge my Wii U controller, and that is fucking annoying. Yeah, Bayonet Bayonetta's fun. It's fast. It's hard. It's got the weirdest style I've ever seen. It is, uh... I guess we're going to have to talk about feminism just a little bit. I, I didn't want to earlier. I mentioned specifically not talking about it. But in Bayonetta, you play a witch, and in certain folklores, you can Google it because I don't remember it. Witch's clothing is made from their hair, so... Bayonetta is a ass-kicking, badass witch with hair clothes. And the longer your combos are, because the game kind of plays like Devil May Cry or Ninja Gaiden, Gaiden, that's... I've never known the proper way to pronounce that. I've even seen professionals pronounce it both ways. Ninja Gaiden. Ninja Gaiden. Anyway, the bigger your combos in Bayonetta are... She starts to use her hair in these combos, which results in her losing clothing. And then she does a lot of obvious sexy poses and stuff. And I was really curious seeing seeing all this. Because I like to... I follow a lot of dumb conversations on the internet about all these topics, which feminism is included in. So I read a lot of feminist stuff. So I wanted to see what the feminist opinion on Bayonetta was. And it seemed 50-50, like the major people, like Anita Sarkeesian or whatever, she didn't like it. But after playing it for five hours and watching her video, it's clear that she didn't play the game much herself at all. Or whomever, I don't even know if she writes her own shit. Whomever wrote the thing for Anita Sarkeesian, be it herself or another person, was spreading a lot of misinformation about the game. So I went on, like, Reddit... And just googled Bayonetta feminism, all that stuff. And found it surprisingly 50-50, which intrigued me, because it's got a lot of obvious appealing to males in the sex appeal in that game. Like, you know, you know your horny 13-year-olds that used to buy Dead or Alive because it had boobs, and they didn't have good enough taste to purchase a Street Fighter game. <coughs> Some parts in the game um, just make me think that it's appealing to that crowd. So, but then I get online and read all these feminist posts, and it seems 50-50. Half of the people had the opinion that I just had of, wow, this game's kind of designed for 13-year-olds. But then the other half of the people in the feminist groups, although maybe they're just trolls, you know how Reddit is, the other half of the feminist groups thought it was awesome. They thought Bayonetta herself was a empowering female hero because she owns her sexuality and enjoys it and it's not forced upon her by other characters and she's a strong independent woman who don't need no man I don't know I thought that was pretty cool it's a lot about character uh, building in these games and how these characters are presented because I don't know a lot of people these days are really upset about language and language that we can use and they don't think this this language is ever (coughs) um, appropriate, I guess. But, again, this is a stream of consciousness podcast where there are going to be pauses and my goal in recording this is to get over these pauses. But I think there's room in writing to include objectionable objectionable content through characters themselves because just because the creator creates a character that may share horrible or racist or homophobic ideas or opinions that doesn't make the creator racist I see a lot of that in like criticisms of Tarantino Tarantino says nigger in all of his movies or they th- they, th- they think it's for shock but I never saw it for shock but then again a white dude, so I don't think I'm even allowed to have an opinion on whether or not this is used for shock, but it seems genuine to me. How about that? And all these movies are, like, empowering, and uh, the racists are never painted in a good light. I mean, they're fucking well-done characters. 
I don't remember where I was going with this. But yeah, stop complaining about stupid shit. Because it's bad for you. I think I was talking about opinions and people being afraid to be wrong again. Or at least some other version of that. Because yeah, people aren't... It all comes down to critical thinking, and these people aren't thinking critically when they see something. They just have gut reactions to everything. This movie said the N-word, so it's terrible. This movie said the F-word, and I'm not fuck. Different F-word. You know the one I'm talking about. They're afraid to think about it and think of the context that it's presented in and figure out if what the intent of the creator is. Because this word may just be used for shock. Again, that means it's a bad movie. Or it may have some meaning behind it. Or some sort of purpose to emotionally manipulate you into enjoying the movie. Because that's all movies are, really. All these stories are subtle emotional manipulations to make you feel things. Which is fine. That's... I sound like one of those nerds that's like, love is only chemicals in the brain. But that's all movies are. The moment you choose to look at them from the perspective of, like, good writing or good storytelling, or whenever you don't, that, that happens whenever you don't like something and you're insightful with yourself enough to figure out why you don't like something. And that's how good art is born, people. People learn things. There's a lot of pointless art out there. There's a lot of good art out there. As long as your art has some thought behind it, it's probably pretty good. I mean, people need to stop looking for the best in everything. That's not... That's a terrible way to phrase that, and that goes completely opposite of what my intention was. People need to stop looking at things with the intention of finding the very best product possible. And people need to start looking at things for what they are. This is people and, of course, games and stuff. Because nobody's perfect. No video game is perfect. You you tell me your favorite game and I can shit on it for ten minutes, even if I enjoyed it. And that goes, I already said, that goes for people too, but all people are flawed. And when you really like people... Those flaws become quirks that just shape their character. Those flaws are what makes them who they are. An example of this in media, I guess. Not storytelling media, but consummation media. Consumable media. Consummation media sounds weird. (laughs) You don't have to marry or fuck the media. But consumable media been playing a lot of Japanese games lately, Bayonetta being one of them, and there is a massive distinction in, like, the UI and the controls in Japanese games versus Western games, and honestly, I think a lot of Western games are a lot smoother, but the Japanese games, there's a quirk to their weird menus, like, I can't explain it, but it gives the game character, it it feels different, maybe that's just because games are getting samey? which is partly through, like, design Darwinism. That's a cool phrase to think about. And, uh... Copying copying and pasting successful formulas, like all the Ubisoft games. They all have open worlds, towers that reveal maps. These games are all samey, so they lose what makes them special, because you've seen it a million times. When these Japanese games come up, and their weird English and their strange menu systems just kind of give them charm. Like, look at Dark Souls. People revere the weirdness in that game's obtusive interface and lack of explanation for practically anything solely for those reasons. So people need to look at what they enjoy of a product. And the flaws don't make it terrible. Things can be great things and have flaws. People can be great people and have flaws. Which brings <coughs> brings me back to politics again. With this party dogma comes the worship of leaders. I want to say, like I, th- I see Martin Luther King questioned on this the most. 
I don't know, apparently he did some bad shit. I can't remember if he cheated on his wife or beat her or something. Google it. You'll find it. That doesn't make him a bad man. That makes him a man that is built of shades of gray. Because that's all we are. We are all different. Nobody is perfect. I'm not saying... I'm not saying beating your wife or something is a it's an odd little quirk that you'll get to enjoy once you get to know someone. Oh, I love Phil. He's all right. He just beats his wife every now and then. No, that's not what I'm saying. Bill can still do nice things while beating his wife. He can he could be the perfect human being that spends 6 days a week, Monday through Saturday. He's just fucking working on charities and donating to the homeless and feeding the poor. Helping veterans. I think I qualified all the... I think I listed all the helpful things from both the right and the left here. He could do all these things to benefit the community. Working with kids. All those six days. He is a great benefit to the world. And then Sunday he just wakes up, doesn't leave the house, and spends all day beating his wife. That brings up debate on whether or not... People are either good or evil. What is that guy? What is what is? How do you qualify that dude? Bill the Saint. He's like Jesus. And on the seventh day, Bill beat his wife. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> I think that's it for this week. I will see you guys later. Thank you for listening to my bullshit. I hope you're enjoying it at least a little bit. If not for making fun of me, then for actual entertainment value. But I'll see you guys next Wednesday. I still need to think of a name for this fucking podcast. I guess I'm going to upload this one as the Ryan cast again. I was thinking about Midnight Special, like that fucking Creedence song. Because I, I, I like to record these at midnight or get them up by midnight. Because that's just when my house is quiet. Also, the middle of the night is so much better during the day. Or better than the day. Excuse me. Just because you can... It's quiet. There's nobody here. There's no expectations for anything. I could sit here with my eyes closed and listen to music. Without anybody giving a fuck what I'm doing or questioning what I'm doing. Or bugging me to do something. The night time is the right time. So I'll see you guys next Wednesday with a weekly weigh-in and more bullshit. I hope you guys have happy lives. See you later.